everyone. Uh, welcome to yet another lecture of the web based decision support system for um, practitioners and uh, decision makers. Um, and we are mostly focusing on business decisions as we uh, had seen in the previous lecture. And we are looking into different uh, aspects of the components of the decision support system and also different uh, case studies of decision support systems. So, today we are getting into what we call as the uh, usage of hypertext markup language HTML as a user interface. We have already seen basics of HTML and some of the aspects of HTML and now we are going to move forward and see what are the basic aspects, so, some advantages of HTML as a UI language. So, today's lecture title is HTML as a user interface language, it is part 2 of the lecture and I am Deepu Phile from IIT Kanpur. So, today's agenda, the presentation agenda is mostly HTML forms. So, that is what are HTML forms and what are the attributes? We have seen the tag attributes of HTML. Now, we are talking about the form attributes of the HTML. The certain input elements. So, this is to input data. Okay. How do you input data into the system? That one. Then we also talk about what is password fields and how do you choose input elements? The submit button and how do you connect it with the PHP scripts? So, the PHP is what we are going to use in this class as the, the application uh, scripting or programming. Okay. So, the application layer is done with the help of PHP in this course. So, we know what an HTML stands for. So, HTML just to remind you, HTML stands for hyper text markup language. Okay. So, what is markup and how do we use tags and everything? So, the question is what is HTML form? Okay. What is the form in this? So, form is an HTML page, it is an HTML web page which contains form elements and there are what are so many form elements, what are form elements we will discuss and what is the use of HTML form elements? What is it used for? What is the use of HTML form? The form is to obtain user input, okay. capture the user input. So, the form elements, we discuss what are form elements. What are the major form elements? The major form elements. So, the purpose of the form elements as we said earlier is to capture the user input from the HTML page and it uses one is text fields, it also uses password fields, drop down menus. So, text field is something like this where you type your text, a password field is also a text field, but the whatever you type shows in like black dots. So, you do not get to see what is being typed. Drop down menus are pretty much shown something like this. Okay. So, the states of India okay. and you have like a arrow down here and you have Assam, Arunachal, Bihar like this and you move your mouse around and whatever it is you get it clicked then selected then it gets selected. Okay. So, that is what you call as a drop down. Radio buttons is like are you sure and then you have a yes or a no and if you click this then a black dot appears here. If you click this then the no appears. You cannot select both of them at the same time. You can only select can only choose one option. Okay. And where check boxes is your favorite color or colors and you have white, black, red, blue, green etcetera and you can tick couple of them and then you can have multiple selections as part of it. So, that is what you call as a check box. So, this is important and uh, how is a form, HTML form is being processed and uh, there is a user. So, in this case you can think about it as a uh, user that is a human being sitting here okay. and the user is has a has a 
has a computer terminal. It can be a laptop, it can be desktop, it does not matter. That is a computer on which the user is able to access a web browser. And the browser is it is a web browser and it can be Firefox, it can be Safari, it can be Chrome, Google Chrome, can be Internet Explorer, whatever it is, that can any one of them. So, the computer has a web browser. So, the web browser, web browser has capability to, to understand HTML, okay. whatever the markup language you say, it has the capability to understand. So, the user uses a computer and with the computer there is a browser and you open the browser and conducts the input and the output functions. Okay. These are the functions or user interactions, okay. either the functions or the user interactions are done with the help of a, so it is a computer plus browser. Uh, you can also in the current world you can extend it to a mobile and a browser also, nobody is going to question you about that, but that is the one part. right? So, that is the user side of it. So, this whole thing that we talk about is the user side or the front side of it. So, then the input by the user uses the browser and it goes into this channel what we call as the HTML form. So, using the HTML form and the data from the HTML form, it goes into something called as a web server. This is another computer. Okay. So, what is a web server? A web server is a software application running on a computer server that caters to multiple users. Okay. So, what happens is there is a computer and then there is an application. So, there is a computer plus application. So, the major web servers, okay, major web servers I think we have discussed already in the class. Uh, the Microsoft has uh, Inter IIS, okay, Internet uh, Information System, IIS, Linux as Apache, Tomcat, okay, most popular one. Then there is Nginx, I believe. So, there is a couple of those like web servers available. So, what web servers are capable of doing is they can capture the data from the HTML form which is inputted by the user in a user terminal that data gets transmitted to the in through from the browser through the internet comes to this computer and in this computer this data from the form is segregated and this one this form gets processed it says cgi it is basically a uh, application program application layer you can call in this case is we are using php at this one and this data using this php it comes to the DBMS. Now, DBMS it is Maria DB. So, whatever the user on the computer that he types using the HTML form, the web server captures the data and the data from the form is taken and passed through the PHP which is the CGI portion in this in our case and then that goes into what you call as the database management system and you have the hard disk here, it gets stored. So, also similar way instead of the this one, the user said I do not want to store a data, I want to retrieve a data. So, what does the user say? User send the same information. So, this is part 1 is storage, okay. part 2 is so storage happens, part 2 is second option is retrieval, retrieve. I want to see what is data is stored. So, same way the he uses the HTML form communicates to the web server, web server catches this information, goes through this one, comes to the DBMS and the DBMS runs the SQL and the data is captured from the stored data and the data is sent back, 
data processed. It is sent back to the web server through PHP, it comes through this model, in this application program uh, as part of this. And in this process when the data is sent from the PHP to the web server, it is sent as a HTML document. So, that is why PHP is capable of PHP can create dynamic web pages. Okay. So, that is the PHP part and then the web server, once the dynamic HTML comes into the web server, then the web server basically moves it to what you call as the browser. Okay. The HTML document which is being displayed by the uh, DBMS, the database management system is sent to the browser as an HTML document and it is then taken as an output and displayed onto the terminal of the user. So, user get to see it. So, the query, the request for the data went through the browser to the web servers in the form of an HTML form and from the data from the form went to the database management system. The query got run as part of this okay. and then the data was processed and that process data when goes back to PHP, PHP creates an HTML document out of it, gives it back to the web server Apache or whatever it is and Apache sends it to the browser as an HTML document with all styles formatting everything and that browser displays the content to the user on the terminal office or her computer. So, this whole thing in the this back side is the back end or people call it as a server side. Okay. So, this is how the forms flow of information in the forms actually gets processed as a part of this exercise. Hope you guys understand this. So, how do you define an HTML form? HTML forms are defined by the form slash form tags. So, as we said earlier, you have the HTML slash HTML tags and within that you have head slash head tags and then you have body slash body tags. Within the body tags is where the form tag comes into picture. Some place you say form slash form. Okay. So, whatever comes here is the user data input output. So, whatever is enclosed in that, the minute HTML sees that HTML knows that okay, user is going to provide some data and I need to have a mechanism to capture it. The most used tag in the form element is the input tag. An input is an empty tag, empty tag means it does not have a pair, it is only just one tag. So, typically for HTML4 onwards, use the input slash option. And the type of input, what you are going to talk as part of it is the, it is specified by the type attribute of the input. Okay. So, if I say input and I say type equals text. If I do that, then HTML understands, okay, this guy is trying to create a text box where I can type a 256 characters text as part of it. Instead of the text, if I type radio, then HTML knows it is going to be a radio button. It can be check box, submit, clear, etc. All these kind of things as part of the input. And it does not have to be a text box, it can you can also use the input to create a, what we call as a button and all those kind of things are also part of this. So, the input whatever it is, it comes under the within the form attribute and then you specify what the type of input you want using the type attribute of the input. So, that is the major form aspect. So, here is an example of a text box. So, the text box example basically shows it and by the way remember go to W3 schools, the open free web page where you can actually do a lot of these forms, create these ones, try, do your best as part of it. So, please go through it, this web page and try to website and online free tutorial for you. So, the you can see this is the form slash form tax, which is the pair of the tax. From there, the paragraph as we say P, input your first name. So, that is shown as a text and then input type. So, this will be shown something like this. It will be input your first name colon and it says input type is text, name is f name, size is 25. So, it takes a text box 
and draw like this and this size is 25 characters. But it can have a max length of 50 that means there will be another 25 which will scroll scroll to accommodate the max length of 50 and the value of this is first name. So, one of the critical aspect is you need the type, the name, the where to identify what is the text box is and uh, what is what the value of that uh, text box is pretty much right. So, we distinguish the user input whatever the user input as part of the HTML form the name attribute is what we use to pass the input to a scripting language like PHP. So, it will actually say when it passes PHP it will say that f name and the meta outside is this person typed it as deep or something like that. So, this pair the name of the text box and the value associated with it that goes into languages like PHP okay? and then PHP parses this and sends it to the database. The size attribute okay, size determines the horizontal width in blank spaces. Whatever be the size you say, this is the horizontal width, what are the 25 characters that I showed you, right? The max length attribute determines the maximum characters that can be entered. Okay. So if I say 25 and max space max length is 25, everything you type and you do not get to scroll. So, if you type the 26th character, the first character will move to the left and then you can keep on typing and the whole thing will scroll accordingly right and the value is used to show a default value if you don't type anything it will just show first name will be stored as what it will be there if you don't use value also it's not a big deal but the name of the field is very critical and the type also whether it's a text whether it's a password etc is uh, quite critical as required as part of this so the same text box if you want to create so in this type is it said input type is text you change it into input type as password. So, then immediately this whole thing that you saw there, it will show something like this input your password okay? and will show you a something like this okay? and this size will be in this point is 10 characters. The important aspect of this is whatever you type here, you do not get to see what it is typed. You will basically get to see black dots as part of it. So, it is a masked. So, this is a masked input. You do not get to see what the user is typing there. So, both are text boxes, both the data entry and also whatever the password entry, both are text boxes, except that the type here is if you type it as password, then HTML understands, hide the input. If the type is text, textual input does not matter. So, typed contents in the password text box will be masked, uh, size has just mentioned. So, the other thing that you need to remember is data in the password field is not encrypted unless you have embedded, created, or added an encryption in the system, it is not encrypted. So, all it does is there is a visual masking, visually you cannot really see, but otherwise it is not secure. Okay, you should remember that it is. Uh, if you encrypt it, then it is protected and the people cannot figure out what is being typed and those kind of stuff. But in a visual masking, all you get to see somebody looking at your screen does not, is not able to figure out what is the aspect there. Then comes uh, the next one what we call as the radio button example. So, radio button example is uh, again it is a form okay, like this between the form tags, uh, you can see that. And then do you like coffee or not? So, it will show something like this do you like coffee or not. So, this text is printed then input type is radio and it says yes. So, it will actually do something like this yes no. Okay. So, the value for so if you click this it will transmit the assigned value. So, in this case the assigned value is for yes is this, for no is 0. So, if you look into how it will be stored in the database, this coffee will be stored as 1s and zeros in the 
database. And then when you read it back, you read 1 and 0 and understand whether it is one, yes or no and then put the data back in it. Okay. So, when do you use the radio button? The radio button is used when the user needs to select one from a limited number of choices. He is to select one of a limited number of choices. You do not have huge expanded list. It is a limited number of choices. From there, you have to select one. The key word is this select one. You have to make one and only one selection. right? The name attribute of the radio button determines which group of the radio button it is part of. So, if you look into this, each one of the radio button will have different values associated with it, but the name of all of them will be the same. So, the name of each of the radio button in a group will be the same. Okay? This you need to remember. So, you say that like C yes, like C no, then no, it will not work. So, when you say like C, like C, like C, there is let us say 10 options and 10 like C's, that means it will allow you to only pick one out of this options available to you. So, the name attribute determines which set of radio button that it is a part of. So, the name attribute tells you where or which group it is a part of. The value can be numeric or text, but the numeric values are easy to check in a script. Most of the time you will see people using ones and zeros because they are very easy to check and store instead of writing the alphanumeric yes and no, because then you have to retranscript it part of it. Right? So, the programmers tend to use numeric values. Uh, some of the people say uh, you know you should store yes or no or the alphanumeric value or whatever it. Now, Checkbox exam, next one is so as we just saw, saw before is the radio button. Okay. So, here you are selecting exactly one from a limited number of choices and all the radio buttons in a particular set is having the same name, this is what we mentioned. Whereas, in the time of uh, checkbox, it is the only difference between the checkbox is checkbox allows for the selection of multiple options. Okay, You can select multiple options as part of it. So, here is what is your favorite character. So, the input will be select your favorite cartoon characters. Then it will have something like Mickey, Tom, Jerry. So, the idea is that you can pick Mickey and Tom or you can pick Mickey and Jerry or whatever it is. right? So, the important thing is you can see that all these check boxes have the same name. So, that means they are part of the same group. Okay? Whatever you see here okay, is what gets displayed here this value you do not get to see. Okay. This value only gets stored into the, so this is what gets stored in the database. So, that is this part and then you can see that input type is checks box compared to the previous one where we said the type is radio. Okay. Radio is select one of the limited options. So, in a check box the user can select one or more options from a limited number of choices. Okay. So, you can have one or you can select more. So, the key word is select one or more. You can choose one or more as part of this. So, the numerical values are better than alphanumeric values because it is easy in programming. As of now, it was an old school concept purely because of the fact that alphanumeric values, the checking and all those kind of things was increasing the programming overheads. So, people tend to prefer numerical values, but recently people does not really care about. Uh, so, they can write Mickey, Tom and Jerry and then that value can be stored as such whatever you want. So, then we now talked about input, password, checkbox, radio buttons. Now, let us talk about what you call as a submit button. When you have created all this uh, data and stuff like that. Uh, so, how do you put transmit this value? So, the submit button is somewhere here. It translates the value, the input 
to the from the html form to the web server now we have already just seen only form now we are giving the attributes to the form so first is the name of the form okay so that's the name says data form okay so that means that particular web page from where the data is captured it will be named as data form and then there is something called a method equal to post so there is two ways it can actually you can transmit data in an html form okay there is uh, let's say here is a just creating it for a visual reference okay here is uh, your first name okay a password okay do you like coffee yes no then your favorite character okay and uh, some mickey mini tom jerry etc and then once you have filled all these things you need to tell the html that i am ready to submit this data i want i am willing to give transfer this data from this html form to you the web server so that you can store it in this when you submit it how does that data gets collected that is called as the data collection method from html form by web server my bad and transfer to cgi in this case a cgi is getwell.php action so when you say when somebody clicks the button submit what action do you need to take you call the file called getwell.php and using the post method transfer the values whatever the values user have inputted in this form and uh, transmit it to it right so this submit button the type equal to submit is basically it creates a button at the end of it okay so when the user clicks the submit button the content of the form is sent to the server okay whatever is the content it goes into the server and the method attribute has specifically the method attribute specifies how the data should be sent okay what is the mechanism of sending the data and uh, there are ideally two mechanisms one is the get and another is the post so the get basically sends the data through the url the data url is used name value pair and you get this limit there is something like 256 characters you can send as part of this so it is sent through the url which is not it's an unsafe mechanism because anybody who sees the url will be able to find or identify what the data is the post on the other hand sends the data through the request body okay without displaying any information to the visitor and there is no limitation on data so post is more preferred over the get purely because of the fact that you can send more massive amount of data and user doesn't get to see it unlike in the get where it is get you get to see through the the url of the system so then the action attribute this is the the one next one we need to look into so the forms action attribute usually defines the name of the file to send the content most of the time majority of the time it tells you which file and the file so the, there are few conditions which should be present present at the specified location okay so the file it can be if it just says getwell.php within two quotes it tells the computer that in the current folder wherever this html page is there is another script called getwell.php so send the data to that so that is what the action attribute says so the file defined in the action attribute usually does something with the received input so what happens is the web server revokes that file sends the data through the method that you have said and tell this okay now you do whatever the hell you want to do action attribute okay instead of sending it into a file you can send it to a specified email address if you want to do that that also you can be done right so the form name is email form and method is post action is basically mailed to a specific you know email so and then whatever the html stuff and submit button so what happens is when you click the submit button an email is created and sent to your email address 
that is also done with the help of HTML forms. Now, the encryption type. So, the enc type attribute of the HTML form uh, literally tells you it, this attribute specifies how the form data should be encoded before sending it to the server. Okay. So, the enc type is this part what we said. So, there are three options available for enc type. The number one is the first one is I will go from the bottom the most widely used is the text or the plain. So, the thing is the spaces any blank spaces will be converted to plus symbols, but no special characters are encoded. So, if you have some white space if you say IIT space Kanpur the space will be done with a plus sign on that. So, that is the one the second one second choice is the URL encoded okay? and all characters are encoded before sent and this is default if not specified. So, if you do not specify anything then this encoding happens by default and uh, the last one is the multi part form data. So, no characters are encoded this is required if the forms have a file upload control. So, if you want to upload a file you do not do encoding because the file will not get uploaded properly. So, you basically have to do multi part form data so that the file upload can work. If you are submitting to a scripting program file, if you are sending it to a program file which is basically like a PHP what we just shown, you do not need to use the enc type because the default is necessary for security purpose. Okay. So, that is uh, what happens and part of this and uh, the select option tag of the uh, HTML form is what we will get into now and the select tags are used to create something called as a select list. The most popular name for this is called as a drop down list or other name for it is pull down list. So, it is something that uh, the states of India if you have something it is a text box like this with an arrow at the bottom and the minute you click it a uh, list comes out and then you pick and choose from the list that is what you call as the select list or the drop down list or the pull down list and the option tags within the select tags define the options that are available in the list. So, the beginning is a and ending is a select tag and then the individual ones are taken care of by the option tag okay. right and so each option in the list is created by the option tag. The qualifier multiple should be used when the user is allowed to choose multiple more than one option which is accomplished with the help of control button and click at the same time click press the control button click the mouse then that you can use to do the multiple selections. Okay. This is only possible if the qualifier multiple is enabled in the by default it is not enabled. So, here is an example form select your favorite car. So, it will appear something like this. favorite car and then the options will be something like this okay. and you will have when you click it, it will have a pull down list which will show something like that Honda Accord, and Skoda Octavia, Ford Icon and Toyota Camry. So, then you can use the mouse to select whatever be the option that you want to select. So, each one of these is a option tag each one okay. and the pull down list is the select tag okay. So, if you want to allow multiple selections of cars to allow for multiple selection of cars you change the select name is the fav car instead of this is the current one. So, it allows for select selection of only one, okay. but if you say name fav car, but add the keyword multiple it allows you to select selection of multiple cars how many are visible options if you want to select how many visible options you can say modify size is equal to 3 okay. and it will only show 3 options at a time. So, then what happens is it will the last one you will see what you call as a it will look like this okay. 
and you will have a scroll bar right here. Uh, so, you can move it up and down, you will see Honda Accord, Skoda Octavia, Ford icon. The fourth one Toyota Camry will be below this, you will only see that and you will have to move the thing up and down to see what is the number of visible options there and uh, this is true uh, immaterial of what it is. So, if you do not want the list to be very very large then that is what it is. So, if you there is a specific default value to be selected then modify the you know option value. So, if you you can add a modifier here also ok. So, this is these ones all of this no default selection. Whereas, if you add the word selected right after the name option value name, then you immediately that means that will be selected by default. Then comes the one of the last we are getting close to the end of it, uh, which is the text area ok tags, where you want to if input multi line text control when you have large text that you need to type it in that is the multi line text control is what is part of this. So, the text area can hold unlimited number of characters, there is no limit with what the type of characters can do this and it always renders with a fixed width font which is courier. So, by default it renders in that way and the size of the text area, the user can specify the size of the text area by using the columns and row attributes and then there is a wrap attribute which determines whether you should allow text wrapping. So, text wrapping means the ideal uh, when you are typing something here and then the text should wrap here kind of a thing. So, that is how if you can turn it off then there is no text wrapping, it can be virtual, the user will see text wrapping, but the web server will not see any text wrapping. The physical means the wrap text with line breaks and tabs are stored. So, no, most of the time the wrap is virtual, so you just want the user to see the wrapped text, you do not want the web server to see the wrapped text. Here is an example of a text area. So, it says form comments. So, it will materialize into something like this ok. Comments it will show a colon and rows are 5 columns are 20. So, it will be something like this a text area like this. So, there will be 1, 2, 3. So, there will be 5 rows ok. So, I do not think I did the rows correctly my bad. So, you will not get to see the rows, but I am just drawing so, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, this is row 1, row 2, row 3, row 4 and row 5 ok. So, this 5 rows and this will be the 5 rows and this will be the 20 columns and then whatever you do you type the comments there and just whether you want to wrap it does not wrap all those kind of things. Okay. And in HTML, remember rows are roughly 12 pixels high and are same as in the case of the word programs, okay. approximately 12 pixel font is what is being used. The wrap physical, the physical tab means that the text will appear both to the user and the web server and the viewer including any page breaks and additional spaces. So, when you pull that data from the database uh, table and display it to the user, it the, the physical one will show it as wrapped whenever it is but the virtual one when you display it back it will not show the wrapping. Then what we have is the field set tag in the HTML form that is the last one. The field set uh, tag is something which actually allows you to it is used to draw a border with a caption around your data. So, in the, if you look into this example what it actually does is it will create something like this health information colon and you have what you call as height, you have a text box, weight, you have another text box and this is displayed like this ok. So, this is the field set ok. Field set is used to ok usually for grouping data collection fields into a specific subcategories. So, when you are collecting data you can use this to uh, group them into specific categories ok. And this is mostly to increase the readability and usability of the data input form. So, some of these elements that are provided in the HTML 
is part of the usability analysis or increasing or enhancing the usability of the form. So, that anybody any user who looks into this will see that okay, this is the health information and this height and weight are associated or as part of the one. And then again you can see the input type it is a text input and size is 3. So, you will actually get to only small with the 3 size font. So, with that uh, we have uh, just come to the conclusion of the uh, HTML uh, form which is also user input uh, system as part of our uh, course. I would request you guys to uh, we have covered the usability we have seen what an HTML is we have seen what an HTML form is and we also seen uh, slightly seen what a PHP is and we have seen how the PHP is invoked from the HTML form. So, in the next uh, session what I will be covering is this CGI or the uh, the application the user the application in between that ties everything together. So, we will learn a little bit of PHP and we will go from there. Okay. So, thank you for your patient hearing and uh, we will uh, continue in the next class. Thank you.